I would give the president the benefit of the doubt. If the president comes to the Congress and says, you know what, we do need ground troops, I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt because this is a huge threat. Uh, we can't pretend it's not happening. We have to, it's a threat to here in America. But the president has to articulate it to the American people. And there should be a full debate in the Congress. It was very cowardly for the Congress to leave without having voted on the airstrikes. And I just think that that, um, I just think we're, we're in a very scary world right now and we can't um, pretend that this isn't happening. I want to make one thing clear. I will never give the president the benefit of the doubt when it comes to putting young Americans in harm's way. I will make sure that we ask all the toughest questions and limit that doubt so that there's no question it is the right decision. I would agree with that as well. I guess what I'm saying is there should be a debate that takes place. The president has an obligation to go to the American people and explain why this is a threat, why it's so important here in America. Um, and, and you know, I, want to be, I don't want to tie his hands. He needs all the tools in the toolbox to be able to deal with this situation. Thank you. So let me just go actually in reverse order to respond to some of the things that Senator Tissé said. Uh, first of all, uh, you will find full agreement for me that the Affordable Care Act needs to be fixed. There's absolutely no question that it's not doing enough to serve small businesses and to serve working families. Uh, we've seen places where healthcare costs have gone up, not down, against the principles of the act. And we need to have leaders in Washington who are willing to roll up their sleeves and fix the legislation. But the reality is, it's not going to get repealed. We're not going to start over. If we were to do that, millions of Americans who now have access to care would lose access to care. Over 10,000 people in this district who now have access to care would lose access to care. So we can't go backwards. And the other reality is that if Massachusetts gets a waiver from this system, then Texas will be next, and Mississippi and Alabama, and the entire thing will fall apart. Democrats recognize that we're all in this together. That means that we need to work hard across the country to make the Affordable Care Act work. But it doesn't mean that we're going to be able to pull it apart. It's not a political reality, and it's not a practical reality for all the Americans who are relying on that care. But let me talk about a couple of examples of things that we really can do to move forward. I've come out in support of repealing the medical device tax because that is hurting the small businesses, especially in this district, that are driving so much of our innovation in healthcare. That tax ought to be rolled back, especially because it hurts smaller businesses more than the bigger, biggest companies. We've got to find a way to bring more, more primary care physicians into the system. You know, Economics 101 is you push out the demand curve with so many more people eligible for primary care, but you do nothing to fix supply, costs go up. We've got to make sure there are more primary care physicians in America. Now, back to Union Hospital. Union Hospital deserves to be here. Lynn deserves to have a full-service hospital uh, because we need to increase access to care. That's something that the Affordable Care Act does. I'm not here telling you that it's perfect. But the Affordable Care Act increases access to care to Americans across the country. That's why we need to work to fix it. That's why we need to work to solve the Union Hospital crisis, uh, to work with people like Senator uh, McGee, Representative Crichton, to make sure that this gets done. That's the spirit of leadership that I'll bring on this issue. The reason why I think that health care is a federal issue is because I, do, I believe that access to health care is a civil right that everybody in America ought to have access to decent quality health care. It's just why, it's the same reason uh, why civil rights and education are also federal issues. It doesn't mean that we shouldn't be able to tweak the Affordable Care Act so that it meets the needs of people in different parts, parts of the country, which are different. But if you simply gave a waiver to Massachusetts, the whole act would fall apart. That's a political reality that's tough to fix. And I understand that it may be more popular to say, of course, we'd like a waiver. Just like it's going to be more popular to say that in Texas or Mississippi as well. But it doesn't mean that it's the right thing for working families in America. <clears throat> Thank you. This is something that I talk about a lot because Lynn is a city with such incredible potential. I mean, we're only a 15-minute train ride, 25-minute drive from downtown Boston. This city has so many assets. It's really the crown jewel of the North Shore. And yet we need to do a lot to shine it up uh, because there are acres of disused industrial space. Uh, there's literally vacant land just south of here along the waterfront. Uh, there is perhaps no better place in Massachusetts to make investments that will pay off for the future than right here in Lynn. So what can we do? 
What we ought to do in Lynn is find a way to not just retain and bring back the old jobs that were part of the Lynn economy for many, many years, but to attract the new jobs, the innovative businesses that can come here out of the startups that start in places like Boston and Cambridge. <coughs> Lynn is a great destination for businesses that are expanding. They shouldn't go to New Hampshire, they shouldn't go out west, they ought to come right here to Lynn. So what can we do to do that? Uh, my campaign has already been working uh, with a firm that helped design uh, how this was, was accomplished with the Brooklyn Navy Yards uh, in New York to act as that destination just outside of Manhattan for businesses to expand to. Uh, what can we do? We can reform the corporate tax code to make it easier for small businesses to survive here. We can build infrastructure in Lynn. Uh, Mayor Tom Costin has worked for years on bringing the blue line to Lynn. We ought to make sure that that finally happens. Improving transportation access and infrastructure to Lynn will drive the economy. We ought to do more for job training because job training doesn't just help uh, people who want to earn more a higher salary. It helps attract businesses to the district. Uh, there was a BMW plant that moved to South Carolina and had such a hard time finding workers for its plant they had to start their own facility. Well, here in the North Shore, between the North Shore Community College, Essex Technical Institute, uh, the, 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 the combination between North Shore Technical College and the Essex Aggie, uh, those are great, great engines of growth to provide partnerships between the public sector and the private sector to get that done. One of my jobs after serving in the Marines was to manage a high-speed rail project. You know, I was paid by the private sector, but I had to work with the public sector to get things done. That is the kind of leadership that we, could, that we need here at Lynn. But I'd like to also take a minute to uh, respond to Senator Tassay's point about uh, being in the majority party. The reality in Washington today is that a right-wing element controls the Republican Party. Maybe different than here in Massachusetts, but they are holding the government hostage. Even John Boehner couldn't stand up to them when they tried to shut down the government. So the idea that we're going to have a voice in that party is, is I think, not realistic at all. And the fact of the matter is, uh, Senator, you've been uh, a leader, an elected official in the Republican Party in Massachusetts since the 1980s. Uh, you were the leader of your Republican Party as recently as 2010. And yet in 2014, uh, when the party wanted to, when the party passed uh, legislation against equality and equal rights, uh, you weren't able to influence them to include that in there. In fact, you walked out of the conversation. So I don't see how you're going to be able to influence the far more extreme members of the party in Washington if you can't even get the party to agree on the values that we all share here in Massachusetts. Uh, notice this. One of the things I'll do is I'll work to end the corporate tax inversions that send so many business profits overseas and aren't a part of our economy here at home. It's fundamentally unfair when I go to talk to small business owners around the district that their effective tax rate is higher than the chains and conglomerates that you all compete against. Higher than the biggest corporations in, the, in America. But that's wrong, and we need to fix that and make sure that those profits uh, come back into our economy here at home. I've been an independent voice all my life. I proudly served in a war that I disagreed with because I didn't want someone to go in my place. So I'm not concerned about my ability to go to Washington and to stand up to the extremists that are trying to hijack our government. But the question is, can you have influence in the party? That's the question. And the fact of the matter is that your record in Massachusetts proves that you weren't able to influence the party on some of the most important issues of the day. So if you're going to say that you're going to go to Washington and change the Republican Party, then you ought to have a track record of doing that here in Massachusetts. I'm going to go to Washington to stand up for the values that we share, to fight for equal rights, to fight for rights for women, to fight for equality across our system, to fight for equal access to education, and to fight for a fair and equitable tax code, not just for the biggest corporations in America, but for small business and working families as well. I'm going to stand up to the extremists. I'm not going to add one more vote to John Boehner and the right side of the aisle that is holding our government hostage. I'm going to stand up to them and represent the values that we share here in Massachusetts.